Awesome. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are on panel three today for International Children's Month Global Wave of Love and our Global Day of Action. We are here with the Elders Climate Action Network, and we've got Sue and Adrian and Shannon. And uh, Sue, what are we exploring today here? We've got Muhammad joining us also. Um, he's, uh, I can't remember where he's from, but I'm just letting him in right now. So Sue, go ahead, tell us where we're okay. at. Okay. All right, well, I'm Sue Blythe and I'm with We The World and uh, in their campaign for environment. And it's just such a pleasure to be here for um, uh, World Unity Week and the International Children's Month. And uh, I wanted to just uh, begin by explaining that we have a pilot project that We the World started with the University of Florida Extension. And what that means is that we are coordinating what we call a community wide climate conversation to action program. And we consider that uh, our local community where I where live, I live and, and also, also I'm getting a, I'm big, getting a echo. big echo. Are you hearing that? Yeah. Um, the uh, idea is we are working in our local community here with the University of Florida and also in our global community. And I just wanted to acknowledge that I'm in the Eastern uh, time zone and I felt the global wave of love, <laughs> which came over at 1111. Is that correct? Am I right, Heidi? It's happening at 111 in every time zone, but it started last night in New Zealand. So okay. it's totally yeah. happening. 111. Okay. That's I was a couple hours off, but I felt it no, anyway. No, it's happening every hour. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's happening sure. everywhere. Yeah. So it's beautiful. And I thank you for organizing this on that special day. So <clears throat> we, in our climate collaboratory, we uh, focus on the Earth Charter which was launched 20 years, 21 years ago now. And uh, it has uh, ethical principles for a sustainable, just, and peaceful future. And it begins with, we stand at a critical moment in Earth's history, a time when humanity must choose its future. And so that's what we're trying to do is help humanity take a look at what our choices are about where we're going as a human family on this beautiful planet and how we can uh, work together to make the best future that we can. I have eight grandchildren and I want them to grow up in a, in a healthy world so that uh, we, can, we can move forward as a global civilization. So, about a year ago, I met a wonderful young man, and that's Adrian Alvarez, and he was on a uh, global call for the Earth Charter's 20th anniversary, and he had a message to the adults and elders of the world. Adrian, you want to tell us about that? Well, hello, everyone. I am Adrian Alvarez, and I am 13 years old, and Right now I'm in Florida. Um, first of all, I would love to thank Haiti and Raheen for inviting us here today. And I wish everyone a happy World Unity Week. Just, um, today I want to express to all of you what has been troubling me and what I wanna see change in the near future. And I will try my best to speak on behalf of all the children around the world. We all know that right now, our world is filled with, with some issues, global warming, pollution, uh, social injustice, and many more threaten our survival. In fact, the UN released 17 major sustainable development goals that we need to achieve by the year 2030. To achieve these goals, I feel that we need people who are capable of reacting with determination to problems, giving the best of themselves and even exceeding their own limits to help others. There's an important group of society that wants to form part of this process. And that group is us, children. 
In the near future, we will be the adults and we will continue the projects that you start today. But we don't wanna wait that long to start working hand in hand with you. That is why we need you. We can be a great team. We are children and we are awake and we are conscious of what is happening. And from our hearts, we ask for a chance to take action. Sue Blythe and I have been working on different ways to help children embark on this journey that we're all taking right now. Um, six days ago, Tomorrow's Dreamers and I invited three young girls to express their thoughts and feelings on the problems that worry them the most. Here, they all agreed that they wanted to do something and they were eager to help. I know deep down that there are millions of other kids out there that want to do the same thing. But sadly, they don't have the resources nor the guidance of a parent to help them. And others would be here with us right now if they knew about the Earth Charter principles. We need to start working together, hand by hand, like a team, a big human family. This is World Unity Week, and we can't forget the millions of young voices out there. So once again, we are children, we are awake, and we are conscious of what is happening. And with my voice, carrying all the other young voices out there, we ask, can we help you, mom and dad? <laughs> That's amazing. You're amazing. I love that. Thank you for speaking out and for being the truth here in this room and for bringing your message of unity and of responsibility to the table. It's wonderful. Thank you, Adrian. Many blessings for you and your work in the world moving forward, brother. Good job. Thank you. And I wonder if we can ask uh, Mohammed, who I have not met, but welcome. Yeah, Mohammed, Mohammed is to new our... to all of us. Shaba Shams introduced me to Mohammed. Mohammed, welcome into the room, my friend. Do you want to unmute yourself? How do you feel about where the world is at right now in regards to our environment? Hello, how are you? Hope you're doing well. I am. Um, uh, I feel in a very weird way that our world is changing, of course, but we don't know where it's going. Because there are people in this world that want the world to change to the best, but there are people in this world that want the world to change for their best. Not the world's best, but for their special and like their only best, for their own benefits. Yeah, I so I see that our world is changing in a very fast way and in a very good way, thank God. And I think that um, I'm a little happy with the changes, you know. The development is gradually getting better. Good. I agree. I think we're getting some good things done. What is your biggest concern about the environment right now? Water, air, soil? What do you think about it? Which one do you think we need to focus on? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, the, my favorite one is air because huh? it's that it, this is the only one that will never disappear. No. Only if oxygen is gone and every single air that we breathe is gone, then we die. So, oh my God. so if it disappears, we're done. I so this it. is the only one that is the most important and that it, it's the one that is very much it's pretty much used everywhere these days mm -hmm. so you see air in uh, there are some like there's an air launcher there are now air is now used to make machines uh, back then it used to be steam now it's literal air it's used to make machines electricity is also used so basically air is actually a part that has multiple gases that helps us make the day we live in and make the whole entire community that we have these days. Agreed. And then a lot of our air comes from the um, um, plants and stuff that grow in the ocean, right? So we get a lot of that and then we get a lot of air from the trees. So there's that whole interdependence thing is what we call it, right? Which is a good thing too. Yeah, I like breathing. I think breathing is fantastic. I really enjoy it. I'm a singer. I need extra air to sing nice, nice notes to people. That's amazing. And where do you live, Mohammed? Oh, I live in Algeria. You live in Algeria. Okay, fantastic. And what is your climate like? What's your environment like in Algeria? Is it a lot of trees or is it um, sandy or what do you got? 
It's a, it's a part where there's industry more than trees. There's work more than nature. So oh. people are focusing more about themselves more than the environment. So that's why I'm pretty much concerned about the development and the climate changing, especially, especially like global warming. We understand in this room what you're talking about, don't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we do. So I am just so excited to meet you, Mohammed, and to uh, have you and Adrian as part of our team that we are developing here for uh, what we call a youth and elder climate conversation. So we're taking care of the planet by taking care of all of those 17 sustainable development goals. Are you familiar with those? Do you know about the global? Not, not well, much. The United Nations in uh, first in 2000 and then in 2015 set goals that as Adrian mentioned, we need to fulfill by the year 2030. And what that means is eliminating poverty, educating everyone, making sure everybody is has good health and health care, um, taking care of life on the land and under the water. And our most special interest at the Climate Collaboratory, I bet you can guess, is climate action. And so we are helping to uh, get a conversation going. And we think it needs to happen in every community in the whole wide world. So you can help it get, its, get started on your side of the world because uh, we need that. I wanted to introduce my friend, Shannon Crossbear, who's been part of this elder and uh, youth climate conversation. And uh, she can give you a little bit of perspective about uh, how, how this is unfolding. Well, um, <clears throat> welcome, welcome, Mohammed. Glad to meet you virtually. Um, and uh, Adrian and I, Heidi again, and Sue. So Adrian and Mohammed, I'm just the grandma here, right? I'm just the grandma. I've been around for. I love how Adrian always says, "I'm Adrian Alvarez and I'm 13." And I thought, how come we don't do that? I'm Shannon Crossbear and I'm 67. Gonna be 68 on my next birthday. So I, you know, I, I love that you always <laughs> introduce yourself, Adrian, by your age, right? And it's this combination of you young people and Mohammed, I absolutely, totally 100 percent get it. People are not working for us, they're working for themselves, right? And I live in a totally different place. I live um, in the middle of the boreal forest. So right, like I look outside and there's hundreds of trees, hundreds. And then right across the road, it looks like uh, the lake behind um, Adrian there, right? So I, have, I live on Lake Superior, which is the largest freshwater, meaning there's no salt in it, right? freshwater source on the continent. There's only one body of water, fresh water, in the world that is as big as that lake out there. It's thousands of miles. Or if you talk about kilometers, it's probably about, it's over 2,000 kilometers around. So, so really the size of some small countries, right? So, um, so I understand, uh, Mohammed, what you say when, because every day I have a little breathing problem myself, and every day I go out and I thank those trees for providing the oxygen for me, right? So, and it is all related because the water goes into the air, the air comes down, and we got rain yesterday, right? It's all related, everything that we do. And so we are at an exciting time though, as you were saying that we have an opportunity right now because of all this, like you're in Algeria, right? I know you're in, in the state of Florida and you're in the state of Texas and I'm in the state of Minnesota in the US, right? 
And here we are together in this virtual room in a way that we could not have been before. And so we're working toward um, we, right? We, the world, we, all of us. And so I invite people to think about the 11 campaigns of we, the world. And you can look it up on we.net just so that you can kind of get introduced about how, so we all know we want to do something, but how do we get those resources, Adrian? How do we start to connect with the 67 to the 17 to the 13 to the seven? And so that all of us together can really help because I know a few little things, but you know things too, right? And between what you know and what I know and what Sue knows and what Heidi knows, that's what we're gonna get to what we need to do to get to that future, right? So it's an exciting time, not without its challenges because Mohammed, what you said is true. There are people who don't quite understand that yet. They don't understand that in order for me to do well, you need to do well. And I need to support you doing well. And our earth needs to do well. So all of that's connected. I, I'm excited because guess what, Davis? This is also the solstice, which means it's the longest day of the year. And it has the most light in it. So, um, so we get to, get to have the most light in the world. And when things get lit up, we get to see them more clearly. So that's a, this, and it's World Peace Day. And it's the beginning of the platform for international children this year is about we, the world. How do we make a world that works for all of us? All of us in whether you're, um, no matter where you're at on this planet, because we live all together, right? So, um, so what we say, well, like we have to do things to remind ourselves of what the heck we're doing, right? So we say that we live in the world of we, and so we use our three fingers to talk about that, right? We say we, one is to inspire. We got to inspire each other to do the good things that we want to do. And then we have to inform each other. We have to educate each other about what's going on so that I know what's happening where you live and you know what's happening where I live so we can help each other, right? And then once we have inspired people to do something and inform them about how to do that, then we have to involve them, right? So yeah, do you like that, Mohammed? Does that work? So if we, yeah, I, th I think it's kind of a good little sign for a reminder. And our friend Rick, he says that we have to go from a me with a M, right, society to a we society, right? So it's just a helpful thing. Like I always think that it's kind of cool if you can carry around all your kind of messages just with you, like really minimalist, right? I've got my stories in my hand. I've got my stories in my heart. And um, I can, I can, carry it with me wherever I go. So I'm really glad that we have a chance today to kind of talk about the youth and what they see and um, those of us that are older and what we can bring to the table to help support you. Because that's my only job now. You know, I had other jobs when I was younger, but my job right now is to 100% support you in making the world that you want to see happen. So thank you for listening to me. And um, and we actually had Angelique was here too. So just so you know, she wants to, she may want to come in and say something a little later. So thanks, Sue. Thanks, Great. Heidi. Thank you, Shannon. And we're just so glad you're on this road to 2030 and 2050 and beyond because we want to work together all ages working together to make a world that works for all. So the way we are doing that with this little group called Tomorrow's Dreamers, 
we have created a game show and it's um, to play what we call the Earth Flash Games. And we're, we know that we're one human family and one Earth community and we need to make some changes fast. So we're going to play the Earth Flash games and see how many people we can get involved. One of those games is looking at, uh, we call it the Earth Flash treasure hunt. And we're looking for people who are actually living the principles to help us have a sustainable, just, and peaceful future. And so one of the things we do is ask people to tell their own stories. So what you told us earlier, Mohammed, and of course, Adrian, um, are your climate stories that in our in our framework, everybody on this planet at this time has a climate story, whether they know it yet or not. And so one thing we're trying to do is help people to tell their own climate stories, and become aware of what it is they are doing that can help to make a better world, a we society. And um, and so we feel like every single individual and family organization and community has a vital role to play. These are the words of the Earth Charter. The arts, sciences, media, businesses, non-governmental organizations and governments are all called to offer, <laughs> uh, yes, offer creative leadership. The government, civil society, and business is all essential for effective governance. So we are working just as much with governments as with all the people in our communities. And that's the climate conversation that we're trying to get started, each in our own community, and then working out so that everybody in the world is helping to make a world that works for all. How you like that, Heidi? I love it. Can I offer up something practical here? Because I want these boys to help me with something. So you guys, what I do to help move things along without having to like wrestle up all the adults and say, listen here, you workaholics, we have to focus on something else because we know how easy it is to talk to people when they're busy making money. So what I do is I close my eyes and I imagine everybody taking care of the planet. And what happens is I become this like tree of imagination and my love for all the people around me who don't know what they're doing because they're busy being distracted. Instead, I can see them happy, taking care of the trees, planting gardens, caring about the air and the water. I imagine all these grown-ups going to the water and saying, water, I love you, I thank you, I respect you, and knowing how to do that. And I imagine, I just use my energy and my heart to be a wave of something else here. And I believe with all my heart that by just closing my eyes and seeing it inside of me brings it to a real thing in the world. And one day I'm going to open my eyes and it's going to look just like I imagine. So I see the world in the future where everything is green and there's windmills and solar and people have solar powered cars and we don't make plastic anymore because we know we already have a lot of that. We don't need any more. And I just imagine it how I want it to be. And I'll tell you, when I started doing that, when I was a little girl, when I was a little girl, the first time I saw a windmill in my mind, a solar, a solar windmill. And then I got to see a real one when I was an adult. And I was like, hey, that's what I saw when I was a kid. There it is. And then that's how Shannon and I have been working on International Children's Month for nine years. And so for nine years, every year, we hold some kind of theme. So year one, we did Imagining Peace, right? And then lo and behold, you know, we managed to find everything peaceful that there was in the world. It all came to us. And then the next year, we loved the water. And then there was barely any water groups. And then by the end of the year, all kinds of people love the water. And now even more people love the water, right? And so then we loved the earth. The next year was the earth and we loved seeds and ending human starvation and, and giving people seeds and the power to grow more seeds and share their seeds with other people. 
And then seed temples started to come to us and people who cared about gardening started coming to us and all of the people to save the earth started coming to us. So it's like your imagination is a magnet for all the good things. So if you can imagine Algeria, and I promise I'll back you up from this day forward until it changes, I'll imagine with you every day that Algeria turns to loving their planet and their and their children's future and the trees and the gardening and the water and taking care of the animals and all that stuff. So I promise I'll back you up on that. And Adrian, I'm already so with you, brother. I've been imagining both of you guys for quite some time. So thank you for showing up here in the reels with me for reels and for having such beautiful, powerful voices. I'm thrilled to meet both of you. So let's work together. Sound good? Yeah? Does it make sense what I said about the imagination or is it too kooky? Some people really get it and some people don't. Does it make it sense? It makes perfect sense because I get that if you can imagine anything, you can do anything. Agreed. I'm with you on that. It's true. How about you, Adrian? What do you think? Yeah, I think imagining these things, like you're putting it out into the universe. Yeah, you got it. So right. You you're it. making you're making this like dream a possibility yeah yeah by you being the beacon yeah you being the dreamer exactly oh, oh i get your title now <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so smart tomorrow uh, good i so, won i didn't even know was one until just now thanks for hearing me yeah <laughs> may i add that we are telling the story we're doing it as a children's story and finding out how the uh, youth and the adults and the elders can all support the children in making the world they want to see right. and the way that we do that is by planting seed ideas which is that vision that you have uh in the gardens of global unity Right. And during uh, We the World's 11 Days of Global wow. Unity, we'll visit those gardens and see how some of those seeds are planting. And so I've heard several today, and one of them I know we're going to be growing is about the uh, planting of trees and gardens. So let's work on that together to clear the air and uh, pull down some of that CO2 that's making our planet too warm. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could add 10 or 20 grown-ups and another 10 or 20 children to Adrian and to Muhammad in their area, you know? So Muhammad right now, how many people do you think you have around you that support your vision? Do you have people around you who are supporting your vision for clean air and, and that kind of thing? Do you have people in your life who are supporting you? I don't really express my idea of a better environment to many people, but anybody that I do who is a true friend and who knows me for a long time, uh, they do support it and they understand it too. They work on it, but they don't give it much time because, as I said, everybody's uh, more overwhelmed by life's stress than by making... Because if you make your environment good, life will be good. Yeah. Because what you reflect on your environment comes back on you. It's like a bouncing ball. What you throw comes right back at you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very smart and very true. I wonder if you expressed yourself a little more, like for sure with your imagination, you know, with using, using that tool, the imagination, you're going to see changes happen. I'd be very curious to find out how far it's come by World Unity or by, uh, what is it called? Our 11 Days of Global Unity in September. Because that's three months away. A lot can shift in three months these days, you know? Let's see. So, Mohammed, yeah. I, I, I would like to just add that, uh, as Shannon was saying earlier, we, the elders, are here for you, the children and the youth. And we want to help you, uh, support you in whatever you think is important. So please consider yourself part of our network. Okay, and we will uh, want to get in touch with you through Heidi so that you can help with our uh, storytelling, that you have a wonderful story to tell. I mean, of course, I would love to help. And I've also got a couple of subscribers and a couple of followers. So we could use social media to spread more awareness. Awesome. Adrian, why don't you tell us about your uh, 
projects online. Well, I, I also have a YouTube channel and an Instagram. It's relatively new. And here I am dedicating it completely to try to inspire and motivate others to embark on this journey that we're taking right now. So far, I've interviewed three people and I've also interviewed Sue, but that video isn't out yet. My channel name is Adrian Alvarez Earth. It's my Zoom name right now. And yeah, I, I hope that in the future this channel grows so that I can inspire many others to, to join us. And I'd like to invite other uh, young people to join us in the Climate Collaboratory. And if you go to climatecollaboratory.org, there's a button that says, join the movement. And you can just fill out a little form and we'll be uh, bringing you into our collaborative storytelling adventure as well. Speaking of which, we would love to invite uh, our friend Raheen to be part of that. She's joined us for some of our meetings. Okay. Raheen is my co-host for the day for International Children's Global Day of Action. Raheen, welcome to the room. Mohammed made it in and Adrian is here. I know they're both excited to meet you and we're gonna wrap things up here and move into the next panel. Adrian and Mohammed, if you wanna come into the next panel with us too, it's a round table of children. You are welcome to stay on or leave, and take a break and come back in, whatever you wanna do. Um, awesome. What do you guys need to say? Raheen, Adrian, Mohammed, what do you think? Well, what I wanted to say was Mohammed was initially invited for that, but I'm so happy. So sorry, I was taking a break. Uh, that Mohammed also made it to this event, uh, and Mohammed was part of this. So that is amazing to know. And the next one is the one that I invited you to for. So lovely to Thanks. have you here. <laughs> he did great. We got to hear about Algeria's environment. I I didn't expect that today. That was fantastic. So it's good. It's good to know what's going on with children all over the world. And it seems that it's a common, the com, it's a common problem. Children are facing the same problem all over the planet. Their parents are worried about making money and putting food on the table and figuring out how to move things forward. And there's where's the time left over to worry about cultivating the environment. So, you know, now we know where we're standing. Hopefully we can get a game plan together moving forward now to make things work for all. Yeah. And may I, may I add that the elders are not in that uh, busyness of earning a living and raising their children and, and doing all that, that we have moved past that in our lives and have time and, and ears. <laughs> and we want to listen to you young people and see how we can help you to make the world you want to see. Beautiful. Sue, so where can everybody find your project so that they can help as a grandparent join and as a child join? So you guys yeah. together. So I think if it, I think the climatecollaboratory.org is probably the best place that I work with many different networks, including Elders Climate Action, Interfaith Climate Group. I feel we're on a spiritual enterprise here. Mm -hmm. And uh and others. So it's, it's what we're trying to do is bring as many people with different perspectives together as we possibly can. And that's why we call it a collaboratory. We're just trying to figure out how to work together in this new world that's emerging. Yeah. So climatecollaboratory.org. And then of course, if you want to get in on the action with the children and youth for We the World or with Sue, with the Climate Collaboratory, with We the World, you can go to we.net and there's a form you can fill out to become a active participant on there also. Climatecollaboratory.org or we.net. Okay, good. So in closing, Sue, how would you like to close up this conversation or launch it into high gear and move and roll it out into September? Okay. So um, I think uh, what I was hearing is it starts within. So having the planet and the, and the global society that we all want starts right in your own heart. And there's a quote from the Earth Charter that I love that says, we recognize that peace is the wholeness of 
creating right relationships with oneself, other persons, other cultures, other life, earth, and the larger whole of which all are a part. And so it's the whole shebang, as, as Shannon was saying, it's so interconnected and interdependent that we just have to appreciate that we're learning how to live together on this beautiful planet. Thank you to the children and you for reminding us and being here for us also and having such a fresh and positive perspective and new energy. It's fantastic. I think it's perfect. Thank you for your work, Sue. Adrian, Mohammed, Grandma Crossbear, Raheen, it's an honor to be circling with all of you. Shannon, do you want to do you want to take us out? Sure, but um, well, actually, what I'd like to do is um, invite uh, Born in a Cloud of Smoke to take us out. Oh boy, here we grow. Okay, so come on in. Oh, so. Glad to see you all. So happy you're here on this beautiful day. And I want you to have a good day today. You'll make it a good day. So I heard Heidi and Shannon and, and Adrian and Mohammed and Sue, and you were talking about imagination. So I want us all to create a new nation called imagination. And that imagination is where we'll all be. So happy solstice and on to the next thing to listen to those youth. They're coming on here next. All right, gigawabaman, until next time. We love you.